Well, with the state of Texas preparing for another round of executions in July, a major breakthrough was announced today regarding the Danish manufacturer Lundbeck and the use of its product pentobarbital in the deadly cocktail used for lethal injections. Earlier today, I spoke with Maya Foa, investigator on Stop the Lethal Injection Program, or SLIP, at the London-based legal charity Reprieve about the latest development. Well, Milo, it's wonderful news, actually. Lundbeck have agreed to completely overhaul their the distribution program that they had in place for pentobarbital or nembutal, which is the drug, as you know, currently being used by so many states to execute prisoners. And what they're doing and what they have done is changed the distribution model so that it can no longer, the drug can no longer be purchased legitimately by state departments of corrections. And they've actually done something, they've gone through a really thorough uh, process of renegotiating the distribution channels so that there is no legitimate way of these drugs being purchased for the purpose of killing rather than for the purpose to which they were, for which they were intended, which is obviously helping and healing. How did they overcome the problem of being manufactured in the U.S.? Actually, not a problem insofar as you can manufacture a drug in the U.S. and you can still control how it's distributed. There is a lot of power that the manufacturer of a pharmaceutical product has to determine where it goes, when it goes there, to whom it goes, how it goes, how much they sell it for, what the agreements in place need to be with the people who purchase it. So, for example, we all know that there are drugs that the FDA would consider particularly dangerous and the FDA is going to speak with the manufacturer. The manufacturer will be forced to put in place a program that means they monitor these drugs and they carefully ensure that they don't fall into the wrong hands. Now, a manufacturer can do that independently of the FDA. They can say, we have a particularly high-value drug or we have a, a high-risk drug or we have a high-tech drug and what we want to do is trace it and, and watch it from source to end user and ensure that various things are being used correctly or that people don't drop off the program or various other things, check out the side effects. So this is actually pretty standard in the industry. Um, and there are specialty pharmacies which are, have been developed and are very, very sophisticated and advanced in the U.S. in particular to deal with these issues and to facilitate any kind of program that a manufacturer might want. So what Lundbeck have done is found a specialty uh, pharmacy. They have decided to distribute using one specialty pharmacy. So they retain control of their product all the way through the supply chain. The one specialty pharmacy then drop ships the product, which essentially means that they deliver it direct to the hospital. There are, there are not lots of third parties involved who could then uh, filter the product through to you know other hands who might use it for illegitimate purposes. There are agreements then with the end user in place which say that the end user must not then sell onto prisons and that the product is not to be used to kill people. That's all good for the new distribution model, but what about any of these states actually use stockpiled material? Well, we have been looking into the quantity of drugs that Departments of Corrections currently have. From the information that I've been given, there are not there are not masses of these drugs in the hands of the prisoners, the prison officials at the moment. Actually, they don't appear to have stockpiled enormously. In terms of the drugs that are already out there, the doses that they have, we will work with Lundbeck and we will see what we can do because Lundbeck are very concerned about the use of this product, not least because there have been reports of botched executions and other alarming features of the use of the product. So certainly that will be something that Lundbeck has addressed but will continue to address, I think, in the, in the coming months. That Lundbeck are going to... I think Lundbeck here can be a model for other pharmaceutical companies to follow. Something, a feature of, of our dialogue with Lundbeck was that we would go, and with other manufacturers, and we would say, okay, your drug is being misused for this purpose and what are you going to do about it? And they would say, well, I don't know, there's nothing we can do because this, 
this was a novel situation, particularly in Europe. When it touched the UK, we took a little while to figure out what the best plan of action would be, how we could stop exports. That was our issue. When it touched Italy, we had to find a different solution. You know, we went over to Germany, Austria. They had also other solutions. Um, the Lundbeck case has been new again for precisely the reason that you mentioned, that they actually manufacture in the U.S. Now that Lundbeck have made these moves, and they will be making them very public, I cannot see how any other pharmaceutical company which claims not to wish to participate in or facilitate executions in the U.S. can choose not to take the steps with the same rigor and decisiveness as Lundbeck have now ultimately done to prevent complicity. They have no excuse at this point. It is possible to do this. And I think this is a precedent that needed to be set, and it's an excellent one. The lethal injection strand is is just, I mean, it's, it's excellent in that we can make progress from Europe. We, uh, most of the time in Europe, we, we, can, we can try to help and we can assist you. You have excellent lawyers in the U.S. that take on these cases, but ultimately... We're over here, um, mm -hmm. and you're on the ground, but here there is something that actually it makes sense for us to work on. And, of course, the, the pharmaceutical industry is globalized. Right. So um, I envisage, you know, this going, this can continue. They can pick a, an American manufacturer, but the American manufacturer may have European ties, may have other ties with people who are anti-death penalty. It's a very interesting book to have, so it's, 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 it's good for us to be able to exploit that. And we're, we're well positioned to do so in collaboration with, with all of the great people in the U.S. working on this. Well, Maya Foa, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. It's an absolute pleasure.